All right, so we were playing with making various, bless you, uh, making various backgrounds, layering them up. This does not end. The last thing I showed you was to use the filters and halftone dots. And they are here. And it's subtle. Right? And that halftone dot is going over everything. But it's so subtle, or it's going over everything except the type and the illustration. And then I made a duplicate of everything and put it onto one layer. And I'm going to save my work. These files are large now. If I actually look at this under image size, this is a way to check your memory. This is 112 megabytes, right? And that's after I deleted all the layers I'm not using. So I, I routinely will have 16 by 20 by 350 poster files that are over a gig with all the different kind of effects and vectors and things that go into it. So it's good to save your work a lot. Okay, so I showed you how to play with halftone dots, which are like these old poster printing. If you go to the class and you go to assignments from the home page. You will see that with this poster assignment, with our type design, which is also called a title flag, and typefaces are also called fonts, though mistakenly, so that's why it's font flag design. You'll see a mentorship presentation on type design that might be useful to you to remind you, but then you see my little contribution here, which is an exhaustive exp explanation of CMYK color separation. CMYK color separation is how a printer sees your digital image. Your digital image is pixels made of red, green, and blue dots. Gives you millions of colors because those aren't dots. Those are actually red, green, and blue lights. There is a red light, a green light, and a blue light. LCD, LED, plasma, whatever kind of lights they are. Cathode ray tube and old TVs. If it's a color TV, <laughs> those light bulbs mix to give you the millions of colors you can see. If they're all turned on, you see white. If they're all turned off, you see black, right? CMYK is how printers do color. It is the opposite. It's what's called the pigment scale, not the light scale. And in order to get a full range of color for the human spectrum of vision from, inf you know, within infrared and not until ultraviolet, you use these four inks. They are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And because ink is not something that you can thin out in a printer, it always prints the full ink onto the page, you thin it out and separate it through individual dots of varying sizes at varying intervals. So to blend them, the ink dots or sometimes shapes other than dots. Here it's done with little stars, depending on the printer. But to blend them, they layer the dots on top. And this is what's called color separation, taking any color you want, like green, and separating it out into yellow dots and cyan dots. This has amazing kind of vintage history in printing pre-digital. And it still is around in printing post-digital. It's just that since the 1990s, almost all printing, unless it's on newsprint for newspapers, is printed at at least 300 dots per inch, right? That's the printing standard minimum. And when these dots are printed at 300 dots per inch or higher, you can't see them with the naked eye. That's where we get the 300 pixels per inch standard minimum for printing. Our printer prints at closer to 3,000 dots per inch, right? So we really can't see these dots. But if you're doing a newspaper, they print at 150 ink dots per inch, right? So they're very, very visible. And there's a charm to it in this kind of vintage use of this color separation that you'll see in lots of work. So here's an artist who does it with silk screen creates them digitally, but then actually prints them with silk screen separating the colors and then does animations from the prints. This is an example of the process. And there's a link if you want to see how he does it. This is kind of like my final presentation. 
It goes to his Behance page, and he really talks you through the process. It's a wonderful mix of analog and digital and just an understanding of, of graphics at a very deep level. I love it. It's for you, you printing nerds. All you printing nerds out there. And then the next example, because that's not separating it into dots, that's just layering up CMYK ink layers, right? And you can see how they layer up to give you the different colors. When magenta and yellow layer up, you get the green. Now this is the guy it's named after. So the Bin Day dot was from the printer Benjamin Day. It's similar to pointillism. This was a way to figure out how to, to mass produce multiple colors, early 20th century. And it's an, these Bin Day dots are an artifact of any kind of professional four color lithograph printing. Because those printing presses that make your textbooks, make your posters, make your album covers, those printing presses are older than digital art. Those printing presses are all from like the 40s through the 60s. Very few new printing presses are being made. And if they are, they're still to the old specifications, right? Because that's how the inks are made. That's how the paper is made. That's how the, the photo work is made. So anything that's professionally printed goes through this process. There is another way to separate your colors that's not halftone dots, the bin day, and it's called indexed color, or sometimes called diffused or um, diverse diffusion or natural diffusion or sand diffusion. And it's made to look more natural. And if it's indexed, it, it's not a half space dot like bricks in a wall. That's what half tone means. Like one line moves one half to the next line. Instead, indexed is made to look like a random generated one. And you can see this is an indexed dither image. Close up, it looks like this. And there's the link if you want to see how that works. What we're talking about is classic four color process CMYK separation, where you take the yellow, the cyan, the magenta, and the black, you print them all at these halftone dots, and then you, you tilt the screens at different angles so that when they all overlap each other, you get what's called um, a Gaussian rose, a rosette pattern that comes from them layering up. I'll show you this very, very simply with my work. But people now with digital art also like to use these bin day effects kind of like a, a retro layer onto their work, right? So it's not always about purely separating these four colors. It's about adding this kind of mixing of color to your repertoire of digital art skills, whether it's like a Lichtenstein painting from the 1960s or trying to you know, add dots to just the skin tone of this digital illustration, which is a recoloring of, an, of a vintage Wonder Woman comic, right? Or this new Wonder Woman comic that uses the Bin Day dots just to make that, that skin tone more dynamic, more interesting. And they're noticeably visible, you know, though a printer would usually do this at a high enough resolution to, to mask it. And the movie uh, Into the Spider-Verse, they use this a lot to mimic kind of the, the texture and the personality of old comics. And this is a great link if it's still active, which goes through their whole visual exploration. How did they get that look? But that's, that's a big resource. Okay, so this is how it works. Even if you're printing what looks like a gray thing, that gray is made up of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So that's a close-up of that little part of that print. And where it's lighter, there are fewer dots. Where it's darker, there are more dots. And they're all layered up on each other to mix to that color. Here's a full color image. Same thing. This is how those angles come at each other to make what's called a Gaussian rose. I need you to know these angles. The most important thing to know is that black is always 45 degrees that yellow is always zero degrees or 90 degrees. It's the same thing. <laughs> so yellow looks the worst. It's got lots of verticals and horizontals to it. So why yellow? Because that's the lightest color. Black looks the best because it's at 45 degrees, like bricks in a wall. 
and black is the darkest. And then the others, you squeeze between them 15 degrees off of each other, always 30 degrees away from black. And we can mimic this in Photoshop. So in our digital coloring primer, you know, for our spot illustration, we went through full color, full spectrum color, color holds, even offset borders. So they show up on dark backgrounds. The last thing I want you to know about is CMYK, being able to understand how it would be separated. And you can see it's just a little textured because it's now separating all these colors into just these four inks, either a high or low resolution. So when we go to our artwork, if I merge it all, I can go to Actions, which you can get from Dropbox. You'll see a whole folder you can download. And then you go to your Photoshop and you go to Window Actions. And you can click here and load those actions that I've created for the class. Where does it say? Load Actions. And then you simply find that in your Downloads folder. You would unzip it. And then you would open it and it would load these and you would see these from everything that's not default action is one that I've created and give to you in the class Dropbox. It's the second folder in the class Dropbox right underneath flatten tip files to print. The one you're going to use here is my Carl color separations action. Notice you'll see a bunch of folders. Think of these folders as shelves next to your entertainment unit at home with all these retro devices because half toning is a retro thing and on these shelves you have vhs tapes but each shelf is labeled so if you want the color separation shelf you open it here and in on that shelf you'll see that there's one for just separating cyan one for just separating yellow one for just separating magenta one for that's just separating black and one that does all four it's called full run they're all designed to be used on one file in Photoshop. And it's even easier if that file is flattened. Right? But this is what the yellow looks like. Not going to save that. This is what the magenta looks like. Not going to save that. This is what the black looks like. They're all made to keep the, um, the original physical size, but to output your film work at 300 pixels per inch because that's professional printing standard. So don't save. So I'll show you how it works. So I merged them all and I saved my work. I can check that by going to file and see that save is grayed out. It's already saved. So now I can do this layer flatten just to make it run a little bit faster because these are big files that saved a lot of my memory. Now I go to my actions. I open up the, the folder that's Carl's color separations. I click on CMYK full run, like I'm selecting that VHS tape, and I'm going to play it in the v VCR. Why am I using this VHS tape? Because this is what I used to do as a kid. I wasn't happy with just picking up like the Little Mermaid VHS. I would actually open it up and start playing with the magnetic tape inside. Don't do that. So each of these actions shows you what the action is. All these drop downs do not mess with this or you screw up the action. It's like I screwed up the movies, right? But all an action is, is a sequence of commands that you program into Photoshop. And these were all programmed in 1997 on Photoshop 6. And they still work today. And yes, I could probably do a more advanced job with the tools now, but this took a long time to set up. So I click on that VHS and I play it. And then it just does its own thing. And if it asks me to hit return, I hit return. But if it's flattened, it will just run automatically. And all of my actions are non-destructive actions. So here is my original untouched. But it created a cyan one, which I can close. It created a yellow one, which I can close. It created a magenta one, which I can close. And I actually learned how to do this from a book that I recommend that I have in the classroom. It's called How to Digitally Color and Letter the DC Comics Way. And it just shows you how to make, make things uh, professionally print ready. And actually, the book had a few mistakes, so I have mine edited 
so that if I ever need to redo it, 